Now it's time to get to work on the wiring for the engine compartment. I'm going to use a lot of the same resources I used on my last video, mainly LT1Swap.com. They've got a ton of information, especially for this engine compartment wiring, along with the old Haynes manual and some other internet research stuff that I did over the past couple months. And obviously with this thing being in the engine compartment, it's soaked with dirt and oil. So I'm going to pull these plastic looms off of here and I'm going to actually clean it as I go. But you want to make sure you wear gloves because car fluid, not so good for your hands. You want to make sure that if you're using anything sharp that you're super careful that you do not nick your wires because if you nick that housing, it might short itself out, cause a fire, all kinds of bad things that ain't nobody got time for. So I already disconnected the PCM and since I pulled this out of a 2002 Suburban, mine has the red connectors and the blue connectors. Yours might have green connectors. When you unplug these from the PCM, sometimes that little rubber gasket can stay connected to the PCM. You want to make sure that you install that on your plug. So just if it comes off, take it off your PCM, put it on the plug, and you're good. So now before we start pulling these apart, we got to make sure we remember which one is red and which one is blue. The PCM itself has the labels already on it, blue and red, so we don't need to label that, but we do need to label these plugs. So best thing to do is to actually scratch it on here and then hit it with a Sharpie as well. Because if you just use the Sharpie, it may wear off. And if you lose track of which one is which, it's going to be way more work than you have to do if you just label it. All right, there we go. Red and blue. Another easy way to tell which one is which, the blue plug has two pigtails coming out of either side of it, whereas the red plug just has the one pigtail coming straight out the bottom. So to get them apart, we have to take this gray piece off of the back of here, and there's two clips on either end. So there's these two down here, and then two on this side here. But there are also clips in the middle. That slot right there, there's a clip down in there, and then this guy right here. We gotta get all of those out of there. And since this is 20 years old and plastic and sits in a place where there's a lot of heat, it's pretty brittle, so you wanna be super careful. You might need to do one side at a time, kinda of pry one side up and work the other. go set that aside and we'll do the red one so to get these color clips off of here there are little white tabs that hold them on on either side there's this guy here and then there's one on this side here so what you got to do is push those in while you pull up on these color tabs and they'll pop up just like that so you can get one side started kind of hold it and then we'll do the other side just like that and they'll pop right off Gas prices, they're at an all time historic high. So to ease the pain a little bit, I'm giving you a discount on all of these gas saving shirts. You can pick yourself up the classic Prius t-shirt or you can grab the brand new Tesla gas saving t-shirt. And for the rest of 2022, since it seems like this is gonna last for a little while, maybe even get worse, I'm giving you a discount. Put that discount towards half a gallon of gas, I guess, maybe. So click on the link down in the description and get yourself a t-shirt today. Now the chart on lt1swap.com is basically telling you how to do wiring if you're just doing the wiring to run the engine as a standalone system. But there are things that I'm gonna keep like the AC and the cruise control. So some of these that are marked yellow, I'm actually gonna keep and I highlighted them green on my chart here. And I also want this to control a transmission since I'm gonna be running a 4L80E. These aren't highlighted for removal on the chart but I am gonna keep pins number 17, 18, 32, 34, and then 41. It says black, but on mine it's gray. And pin 72 and pin 79 on the blue connector. And then since I want to see if I can use this wiring somehow to connect up my fuel level gauge on the old instrument cluster, I'm also going to keep this orange and black one on pin number 80. And then on the red connector, there's a few on here I need to keep as well. And that's pin number 6, pin number 8, pin 42, pins 47 and 48 pin 51 and 62 and 63, the gray wire and the pink wire. And then this purple one on pin 54, that also goes to the sending level gauge thing on your fuel tank. So I'm gonna keep that one on there as well. And then all the wires I need for the cruise control are also on this red one here. You've got pin 13, pins 20 and 21. 
And lastly, since I'm keeping AC, I want to keep all the AC stuff on there as well. So I'm keeping pin number 17 and 43 and then pin 55, which is the dark green wire. So we're going to start with the blue connector. So the first one I'm going to get rid of is pin number 13, which is already gone. Should be an orange black one right there, which I don't even have. Okay, so good. One down. Next one is pin number 23. Sensor ground to the EGR. Again, I don't even have that one. Let's try 25. That's this tan wire right here. And this is a sensor for bank number two, sensor number two, air fuel sensor, which I'm only going to run the front O2 sensors, not the rear ones. So this rear one can go away. You kind of push on it, you can see which one it is. So to get these out of here, there's just these little teeth right here. All you do, try the tooth back so the pin can be pulled out, just like that. Bada bang. Since I'm running an electric fan, I need to add a wire to pin 42 on the blue connector. So I'm gonna try to find one that I removed that's the longest one. There's one right here that goes to the oil level sensor, which is this huge, long brown one here that looks pretty good. So I think that's gonna be our winner. Let's snip it up here pretty close. Now we've got our crazy long wire that we can install. And these have little weatherproof things in there. So you're gonna have to poke a hole in that. So either jam a long needle in there or try to work it with a sharp nail or something. It's got to be small enough to fit in that hole. Come on, you bugger. Get in your hole. You do good for your hole. There, we got it. Took a little persuasion, but there it is. Now we got to make sure we mark this down in our notes that we got a brown wire for fan one control. And then I also labeled the wire and I'll coil it up and get it out of the way. Now that I'm sure that I got these connectors all done, all the ones that need to be removed are removed, and we added that pin to pin number 42. Now we need to make sure that these are watertight again. So I'm gonna fill any of the empty holes with hot glue. When you reinstall these color caps, you want to make sure that the pins are straight and that they go where they're supposed to go in the cap. And then the slot at the end of the cap lines up with the tab on the connector. Then we'll replace the gray cap on the back and then do the same for the red connector. Now we can pull all the wires we removed from the PCM, but I also marked the other wires we're going to remove with the red duct tape. Here's the wiring for the EVAP sensor. This one is for the oil level sensor and the oil pan. And then this is the coolant reservoir sensor. I'm only gonna run the front two O2 sensors for each bank, but all these tan wires go to this splice right here. So I'm just gonna snip the wires off for now and tape it. I have to reposition everything in the car, so I may need to make these wires shorter or longer. So I'll resolder it at that point. And the black wires for the O2 sensors also go to a separate splice. So again, I'll just snip off the ones I'm removing. The black wire on this coolant reservoir wiring sensor thing also goes to that same black splice pack. So again, we'll just snip that one off. Now we're over here at the UBEC and we're going to need to remove some of these pink ignition wires from C2, which is the black one. I got them coiled up so they're easier to work with instead of having a bunch of long wires. And then also the EVAP sensor, I had two wires, the green and white one went to the PCM and this pink one, you guessed it, goes to C2. We're going to remove the C2 port and it's just a seven millimeter bolt and then we'll use a screwdriver to kind of pry on the sides to get that pin loose. It should pop right out. So these two here are going to the same port. Those are for your O2 sensors. And then here's the one for your EVAP. So we'll depin these. Just gently work up the little blue clip that holds them in there. And then we'll grab the terminal tool. That's like the little sharp guy right here. And then on the front side of this, there's a pin that holds it in there. So all you gotta do is gently pry up on that pin and then it'll pop right out, just like that. One for the EVAP. There you go, deep in. Add that to the pile. 
And then when these go in there, you can't get them backwards because it has these little tabs right here that line up with these tabs here in the port. And now I'll just zip tie all these wire looms together and that's basically it as far as the engine wiring goes. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, make sure you comment down below. And if you appreciate this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really does help me out. Share with your friends, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Get yourself a t-shirt over here and the social media stuff down there and I'll see you on the next one.